This is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over an NCLEX review question about compartment syndrome. And don't forget to check out the other questions in this series. So let's get started. Our question says a 55 year old female arrives to the ER with a right leg fracture. An x-ray is performed and shows a closed tibia fracture. A closed reduction is performed and a cast is put in place. The patient is ordered morphine 2 mg IV every 4 to 6 hours as needed for pain. The patient calls on the call light to tell you the pain medication is not working and that it even hurts to slightly stretch the leg. What is your response to this statement by the patient? Select all that apply. A, reassure the patient that this is normal after a bone fracture and reposition the cast. B, readjust the cast to ensure it fits snugly against the fracture. C, perform neurovascular checks. D, elevate the leg above heart level. E, loosen and remove restrictive items. F, notify the physician. So after reading that scenario, some things should be jumping out at you. Okay, we know that this patient has a bone fracture. They have a cast in place. They have pain medication on board, which they've received, but it's not helping their pain. And they're even having pain where when they stretch, it even hurts. So you should be pulling from your nursing knowledge thinking, okay, what are the complications of a bone fracture? One big thing is compartment syndrome. Now, does this fit compartment syndrome based on what's going on? And it does. And why do we know that? Okay, well, we know that because with compartment syndrome, one of the earliest signs and symptoms is pain. So we know that this patient has pain, it's not being relieved. And the pain actually increases with just this like passive moving, just simply stretching the arm or elevating the arm. Now, why is that? Well, let's talk about what compartment syndrome is. Okay, just with the name alone, you should know and help you to remember is that it's dealing with the compartments. So if you slice the leg in half like this or the arm and you looked at it from this view, you would see the bones and then you would see these individual little compartments. And each compartment has its own muscle, its own blood and nerve supp supply. And surrounding it and separating it is this very tough membrane called fascia. Now the great thing about fascia is it's super tough and it keeps everything nice and bound together. But one of its pitfalls is that it doesn't expand. It's not elastic. So if anything increases pressure within one of these compartments, it stays within the compartment. That fascia is not going to expand out to alleviate some of that pressure. And unfortunately what's going to happen is that pressure can get become so severe that it can cut off that blood supply and the nerve function that's actually in that muscle compartment which will lead to if it's not corrected within six hours irreversible muscle nerve damage so as a nurse we want to catch this early and one of the early signs and symptoms is the pain but we're also looking out for what we call in nursing the six P's. We're looking out for pain, paresthesia, pallor, paralysis, poikiothermia, and pulselessness. Now compartment syndrome can occur with fractures, with cast placements, which our patient has a cast, and other external things like traction. Also it can occur in burns, but for this lecture we're going to concentrate on fractures. Okay, so why the pain? Why is that early? Well, what's happened is that there's increased pressure within this compartment. It's putting a lot of pressure on those nerves and it's hurting. And just barely stretching that is going to put, increase the pressure within that compartment and cause the patient a lot of pain. It's gonna be more severe pain than what a normal bone fracture should feel like. Like if they're getting morphine, those opioids, it should start taking the edge off. If it's not, it's very alarming. Next, the paresthesia. This is again where all that compression in that compartment is decreasing the blood supply and it's cutting off the nerve function. So if it's in the right leg, that right foot may start to feel like it's going to sleep. The patient may report that to you or it's like pins and needles feeling like it's gone to sleep. And um, it can also have pallor looking look to it where if you compare it to the left foot, which is nice and pink, has a less than two second capillary refill, the affected 
leg with the foot will be dusky looking. It could be really pale. It has a greater than two second capillary refill, refill and that is where the blood supply is being diminished to that extremity because we have ischemia going on. Next, paralysis. The patient may not be able to move the extremity. And then we could have poikilothermia. And this is where if you take your hands and you feel that distal extremity from the fracture and then you feel the unaffected extremity, you will feel a temperature difference. Like the one that's affected will feel cooler in the same location compared to the one that's unaffected. So there's, it's unable to regulate its temperature. So that's another thing you can watch out for. And then the pulselessness, and this is a late sign. If you no longer have pulses, it's very, very bad. So um, whenever as a nurse you're looking and checking those pulses, you're gonna be checking these regularly. You need to take a marker and you need to mark where the pulse is so people who come behind you can tell where you felt it. And it's best to have a Doppler to assess those pulses so you can hear the pulse. A lot of floors have those. You take the little ultrasound gel, use the Doppler, and you'll hear the swishing noise to measure the pulse. But again, like I said, that is a late sign. Now, let's look at our options. Okay, we had, this is a select all apply, so there's more than one answer. So what are we gonna do whenever this patient tells us this? How are we gonna respond? Okay, A, are we gonna reassure the patient that this is normal and we're gonna reposition the cast? No, this is not normal. The patient should be getting some relief from this pain medication, but the biggest thing that is really alarming is that whenever they're stretching the extremity, it's actually hurting worse. So there's compartment syndrome going on. We don't need to tell them that this is normal. We need to investigate this more so we can cross that off. Okay, B, readjust the cast to ensure it fits snugly against the fracture. No, 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 would not do this because What's going on is we have way too much compression going on. This is what's really, we have a lot of swelling, it's compressing our part, compartments, it's increasing the pressure, so we don't want anything else to cause more ischemia. So we're definitely not gonna do that. C, perform neurovascular checks. Yes, this is where we're gonna be checking these six Ps regularly, monitoring them for that. So we definitely want to assess that because we suspect that it's going on, but we want to look at it further. We wanna see how severe it is. So when we call the physician, we can tell them our findings and that the physician can order or come by and see the patient do whatever they need to do. So that is one of our answers. E, elevate the leg above heart level. Well, on the surface, this sounds good, but think about it, what are you doing? Okay, we have ischemia going on, so we wanna maintain arterial pressure. So we wanna keep that extremity at the heart level. We don't wanna elevate that up because that is going to decrease our arterial pressure, which is gonna cause even more ischemia. So watch out for those tricky words. So we can mark that off because we're gonna keep it at heart level. We're not gonna elevate it. Okay. E, loosen and remove restrictive items. Absolutely, because remember, we weren't going to make sure that the cast is fitting on there snugly. We need to remove anything that's restrictive on that or make it loose so we can promote more arterial pressure flow and decrease that ischemia. So that would definitely be one of those. And the physician, um, some things they may do depending on how severe it is, they may, with the cast, they may cut it in half, bivalve the cast to relieve that pressure, remove the cast altogether, or if they are on traction, reduce the weight. Now in severe cases, they would do a procedure called a fasciotomy, and that's where they go and they slice open that fascia, and that will help alleviate that pressure within that compartment. And F, notify the physician, absolutely, we would definitely do that. So our answers are C, E, and F. Okay, so that wraps up this NCLEX review question over compartment syndrome. And don't forget to check out the other questions in this series. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.